Hello, everyone. Yes, we are live uh, here on our webinar platform and uh, also on our YouTube channel. So for the viewers that are watching us on uh, YouTube uh, right now, so if you would like to take part uh, in the discussion and uh, ask a question to, to our speaker, please register to the webinar room by the link that you see in the stream description because uh, we don't have uh, comments uh, active uh, on our YouTube channel. So uh, today we speak about carbon footprint as the first step towards uh, ESG and why carbon management is important for the banks. My name is Olena Grinyuk. I'm CE Director at the SME Banking Club. I will be a host today. And my guest today is Kamil uh, Goswawski, Senior Key Account Manager at Grief Poland. Hello, Kamil. Glad to Hello, have you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the invitation. Sure. So just a very short uh, organizational information from my side. So we plan our webinar for 40, 45 minutes. Uh, we are recording this webinar. So right after we finish, you will receive the link uh, to the video and the presentations. And we start from the presentation and uh, after that we will have a Q&A session. And I do invite you to share your thoughts, ask your questions to make this webinar live. Uh, and and uh, let's go to the topic. So carbon, uh, carbon footprint. Uh, we decided to discuss this topic because it is becoming very um, important due to two main reasons, I would say. First is uh, are the regulations. Uh, I think that you know that from 2023 that the, all issues related to the sustainable development will have to be uh, reported by large companies and from 2026 also by SMEs, so the ones that are listed on the stock exchange. So this is a change that everybody should be prepared for. And, uh, and second um, thing, so except regulations, there are possibilities and opportunities for the bank to play a vital role here to, find, uh, to fight against climate change and uh, change uh, a bit customers' behavior, maybe using uh, the transactional data and showing, for example, how this customer spending uh, influence the carbon impact. So uh, um, what uh, we have noticed uh, recently here in the um, Central Eastern Europe, uh, I have in my mind two examples. Uh, first one is um, BNP Paribas in Poland implemented uh, uh, such a calculator for the households, uh, which is uh, free of charge and published on, the, on their websites and everybody can check uh, its level, uh, their level of uh, of carbon uh, uh, impact, and um, a month ago, United Bulgarian Bank (UBB) launched uh, carbon emission calculator for the agricultural customers. So th these are like the latest two examples here from the region. And uh, Kamil, I'm passing uh, a word to you at once to share uh, with your experience and and your implementations of these tools. You're welcome. Uh, so once again, thank you, Lena, for the invitation. And hello, everyone. Uh, today, I want to share a couple of information about the carbon footprint, uh, maybe from the, uh, let's say, financial industry uh, perspective, because of fact, I'm responsible more for the uh, financial and banking uh, industry, and uh, also based on my previous experience uh, in that area. Uh, so today uh, I want to cover a couple of uh, um, subjects, uh, starting from, uh, let's say, the problem and the key drivers, uh, why it is uh, that uh, carbon footprint is so important and maybe even, let's say, sexy subject uh, at the moment. And what is the uh, market perspective? And uh, in practice, I want to also show you uh, how we can handle uh, the calculator of the carbon footprint and even uh, maybe I will uh, try to share with you some, some tips how we can uh, manage the, that challenge. Uh, so uh, what is the problem and key, key drivers? Uh, 
all we know, as also Olena mentioned, that uh, ESG factors are uh, pretty uh, crucial points uh, on the strategies uh, in the banking industry. And also because of the regulations, uh, we know that uh, it, it's quite important. And uh, I, as a company, SME or corporation, need to report greenhouse gases emission, included carbon footprint. And uh, um, also it is connected with my activities and also my uh, whole supply chain. And maybe from the SME's uh, perspective, uh, very often also with our customers, we, we meet a couple of questions, where and how uh, to start? Where do I get uh, data from? What's a formula? What, uh, what are the ESG reporting standards and how to collect data from my supply chain? So, so that that is, let's say, the uh, the the question to cover. Uh, and uh, maybe a little bit about the key drivers. Of course, the the regulation are the the main uh, from the ESG reporting. Uh, for example, in Poland, uh, at the moment, the three hundred of companies uh, have to. Uh, have obligation to uh, to show and sharing the non-financial uh, reporting, uh, including KSG factors. And we know that uh, till uh, 2025, uh, because of uh, next uh, forward regulations, it will be even a three and a half thousand companies, including also SMEs. So, so that is uh, quite important to, to notice. Uh, the other area is the pressure uh, from the two sides, the investor and partners, and also from the customers, because uh, maybe you know that 92% uh, um, of customers would choose the sustainable brand. Uh, so it's mean that in case that, uh, for example, we have two uh, similar uh, products or similar services providing to, to the customers, and in fact that the customer uh, will have to choose uh, he will choose the the more uh, sustainable uh, brand and and product or service so it's it's also quite important and no financial risk management and mitigation of supply chain uh, is uh, is all, also the the key factor and uh, limited access to financing financing because uh, that that could be the conclusion uh, in case of uh, of the, um, for example, not meet the, the all regulations and sharing the, the information, and also what is uh, worthless to mention uh, that in production process, uh, on average, ninety percent uh, of the impact in driven by the uh, is driven by the supply chain. So also we can uh, remember that that uh, we not only uh, we are important uh, in the reporting process, but also our supply chain. So, so that is also very, very crucial. And how about the carbon footprint calculators? Maybe a couple of, uh, let's say, summarize facts and, and uh, information to, to make sure that uh, we, we are on the same page. Uh, the greenhouse uh, gases are measured by two main aspects uh, that impact global warming, the radioactive forcing and residence time in the atmosphere. So that is um, important to, to mention. And in the financial reporting uh, perspective, based of course on the European Union taxonomy, uh, the um, measured globally by the greenhouse gases protocol emissions are classified as environmental pollutants according to the three distinct categories scope one scope two and three and maybe i will just uh, jump in to, to explain what is the differences uh, between them uh, scope one uh, emission so-called direct uh, emissions can be directly related to a company's activities, for example, emission from automobiles and uh, emission from uh, any production plant or operating facility. Scope two emissions uh, defi defined as uh, indirect emissions are classified as an energy consumption in um, uh, that is part of the production of any product or service. Scope three emissions like scope two also indirect, but uh, 
that, that are the most difficult to identify, uh, not falling into the previous two classes and converting the activities uh, of the entire downstream product lifecycle from business travel uh, to support uh, chain logistic to end of life waste of any, any product. So uh, that, that is uh, also important. And uh, maybe uh, I, I just want to uh, share some market overview uh, based on two reporters, uh, reports uh, that I study. The first one is the uh, digital banking maturity uh, created by the Deloitte. And what we can observe uh, in case of carbon footprint uh, measures, uh, we, we can observe that uh, 30 banks classified as digital champions, uh, almost in half of them have some tool or, or uh, possibility to, to measure the carbon footprint. But in the other hand, uh, we have uh, 274 uh, other banks, not the digital champions, uh, that only in 30% uh, have such possibility. So, so we can observe the, the huge gap to, to fill in. Uh, that uh, and let's say um, quite a big uh, challenge for for the banks from the financial industry to to cover that uh, that gap and also uh, i think that uh, the the very important report that we have uh, is the green finance in poland uh, from 2022 created uh, by pwc and we have a couple of conclusions uh, based on it uh, Mm, and uh, from my perspective, it's, it's very important that 69 of the banks plan to take into account the impact of ESG factors on the processes and risk profile in a quantitative manner in the credit risk manage, man, management in the coming year. 94% uh, uh, of banks plan to obtain data on ESG uh, directly from the counterparty. It's also very important that uh, we um, we we will know that uh, banks will, let's say, based on the uh, external sources and uh, from and the data from the, the uh, partners. 81% of financial institutions plan to expand their offer with new credit products in the field of uh, sustain, <coughs> sustainable uh, financing. And uh, maybe a couple of thoughts about the challenges. Uh, how 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 it looks like from the bank's perspective. Uh, I think that the, the three of them are the most important. Uh, no final uh, re transparent regulations. 75% uh, uh, banks agree with, with that, but uh, there is a big issue with the, uh, let's say, not transparent regulations. 94% uh, uh, of the banks agree that there is no or limited availability of data on ESG counterparties. So we can observe that there is a, a huge gap. And almost half of, uh, half of the banks uh, indicate that uh, there is low quality of disclosure and uh, counterparties awareness of ESG factors. That is, let's say, quite uh, surprising for me. But uh, maybe from the smaller uh, companies, it's not so, uh, let's say, crucial point at the moment uh, because uh, we know that we have some time to prepare, but uh, maybe we, we want to uh, maybe do something with that in the um, uh, next time. And uh, also, uh, I prepared two, two additional questions from that report. What technologies, IT solutions will uh, you need to implement your ESG and climate strategy? And the bank, banks respond that uh, in 63% uh, uh, extension of source systems with data in the field of ESG uh, is, is the needed for, for them. 56% uh, indicate that external databases containing customer assessments in the terms of ESG risks. And also 38% uh, customers assessment system in the terms of uh, ESG risk indicate as a, as a need. Sorry, that, that is my uh, coffee machine. 
And uh, other uh, other question: What system or sector uh, solution would, in your opinion, be useful for the implementation of ESG uh, initiatives? And what is uh, the the most important? I think that 94% uh, um, uh, of the banks uh, indicate that developing uh, uniform rules uh, for the interpretation of regulatory requirements in the field of ESG in the banking sector is uh, um, it's, it's important. 81% uh, indicate the sector database on ESG risk uh, on bank customers and uh, 50, almost half, 50% introduction of a certified ESG rating system for bank customers similar to licensed rating agencies and maybe what is uh, also worth to mention uh, 63 percent introduction uh, of detailed ESG disclosure requirements uh, guidelines uh, for large enterprises uh, companies listed on the um, uh, stock exchange so so I think that it's uh, it's quite to remember uh, what is the market overview and uh, maybe we'll jump into the uh, practice part and the case, st case study how uh, it works uh, in case of uh, solution provided by the uh, CRIF, uh, how we can handle the, uh, the uh, carbon footprint calculator. So basically we create the, um, some kind of uh, web platform uh, with the questionnaire and the part of it is uh, the um, the assessment in case of uh, of carbon footprint. So the, the the user enter the ESG survey via web interface, and you can see it uh, on the screen. Uh, it's just like that. And uh, in uh, go uh, further, the the user can select questions referring to greenhouse gases reporting in the environment environmental section of the survey and as I mentioned before we have three scopes scope one scope two and scope three and also what is worth to mention that we have uh, based on the questions we have also information uh, about the let's say connection uh, with the regulation uh, specific regulation connected with uh, with the question uh, in uh, in this uh, case there is uh, a global reporting initiative, and G, uh, GRI and SDG, what is uh, Sustainable Development Goals uh, created by the United Nations. And then, uh, of course, we, we can uh, explore more uh, each of the scopes and using drop-down list, users select a fuel macro type and then fuel type that uh, correspondent to its activity and enters fuel usage and that, that carbon equivalent is calculated automatically. And uh, there are two sections to calculate the greenhouse gases scope one, uh, stationary co combustion and mobile combustion. And in next step, uh, the similar to the previous step, users select country uh, where it brought electricity uh, and or heating. Uh, heating and fills uh, in user amount in order of uh, carbon usage was calculated yeah. by adding uh, a new line additional country will be added uh, to the list because uh, as far as you can uh, you remember uh, in, you can let's say based on that calculator um, also asset uh, asset the the car carbon usage uh, from the electricity and heating and uh, next step is calculation of the supply chain uh, um, and carbon emission uh, is divided in two categories upstream transportation and distribution and uh, business travel and also uh, you can see on the on the screen that uh, um, there is a uh, let's say first filter and uh, the user need to select a more Precise categories referring to the trans, uh, transportation type and vehicle type, and then the, the calculation will will be done uh, automatically. And uh, at uh, at least uh, it will be at last it will be uh, the the final summary uh, with the result of uh, greenhouse gases emission 
uh, and is reported with the distribution per each scope. And the results are in input uh, to the uh, SynSG server, the, let's say, um, and the whole summary of the uh, some kind of ESG rating, because uh, the calculator is only the, the part of the whole survey. So uh, in, uh, in that way, we can handle the, um, the carbon footprint. And what is the methodology? Uh, what is, uh, um, let's say, based to the calculation? Th this tool allows the, the calculation of emission based on the estimates and average values. Uh, to get an accurate estimate, it is essential to enter precise and correct data. Uh, and uh, the estimates are based on the data from various uh, sources, including GHG protocol, uh, carbon footprint, country-specific electricity grid, greenhouse gases emission factors, and Ecometrica electricity-specific emission factor for grid electricity. Uh, and uh, maybe a um, couple of words, uh, uh, who can use it? and uh, why it's it's good to uh, um, to implement uh, some that kind of solution uh, first of all it's uh, dedicated to the head of supply chain because as i mentioned before at the first slides uh, um, even the 90 percent of the uh, of the usage uh, of the um, even the carbon footprint uh, is created by the supply chain and our vendors, uh, partners, uh, counterparties, and uh, we we want to let's say help uh, and support uh, our customers, uh, which are the head of supply chain to. Uh, to measure and asset uh, that uh, that area, and also it's uh, uh, it, it is uh, for the suppliers and, uh, for example, SMEs to to make sure that uh, based on that solution uh, we can uh, check ourselves to asset uh, our level of the uh, ESG score or ESG factors and uh, even get the certification. And as I mentioned before, uh, there is not only the calculator uh, in our solution. We have also the um, the whole, let's say, scope of performance uh, to to make sure that we'll cover uh, the the business score, uh, environmental score, social score, and governance score. So you can see uh, on the screen. Uh, the let's say the example how it, how it could look like in case of uh, whole survey and summary uh, of uh, of that survey and uh, at the end we we can create of course the the reporting yeah and uh, as i mentioned uh, uh, at uh, the first stage and the first uh, um, uh, slides uh, I prepare some some tips uh, in, in case of handle the uh, uh, let's say uh, sustainable de development and I think that uh, what is uh, very important to base on the uh, international standards because of fact that uh, let's say we have a couple of regulations but it's not uh, so easy to to cover uh hold, hold the scope and it's not easy to interpret it uh, and so so i think that it's very important to base on uh, the data that we have uh, i think that also we have to uh, trust the professionals uh, of course it, it it is easier to um, manage that uh, that subject for the um, big uh, companies enterprises uh, because of course we can arrange the uh, the um, consultants the, the big uh, four for example uh, that uh, can help us to uh, to measure and uh, even uh, prepare the strategy for for that area but uh, also other companies like for example give also can support uh, customer in in that case what is also important to try to evaluate objectively uh, based on check data because very often uh, let's say we have some calculators let's say but it's 
rather like a, let's say a quick quiz to fill in some uh, some information and then we we have ultimately get some uh, some report or some amount of our carbon footprint but that is not uh, let's say always uh, fair and not always uh, that is correct but it's only a uh, let's say big estimation and uh, what also is important uh, i think uh, to cooperate with our partners uh, in case of the uh, whole supply chain. We have to get the, the information for them and uh, make sure that we cover that area because uh, it's not uh, only important what we do internally, but also externally with our partners and our whole uh, supply chain. And uh, at least, uh, at last, uh, uh, do not hesitate and start uh, acting now because I, I think that uh, we don't have a lot of time to prepare for it because uh, start uh, in 2023 we we, we obtain to uh, we are obligated to uh, to create such reports and also as I mentioned before uh, since 2025 even the three and a half thousand uh, companies in Poland have to uh, also uh, create and share that that kind of reports with uh, with the uh, uh, stakeholders and other companies as well. So there is a pretty uh, let's say uh, summarize uh, information from my perspective. Uh, if you are interested in our solution, uh, we we have uh, all, also the um, the demo for the customers. And in case that you are interested in, uh, of course, I, uh, I can uh, support you, and we can help to to also ask uh, um, all the questions. And that's all for from my perspective. Thank you very much, Kamil. Great presentation. Uh, so now we have time for the for your questions. Uh, I we wanted actually first of all to ask you whether you uh, implemented uh, already such a carbon calculator. So from from what we started the presentation, or maybe you plan uh, to to do it. So now you should see the question on your screen and. Uh, we ask you either to press a green button that you see and choose yes or no, or just type us uh, in the in the chat so we could understand uh, uh, what is what is what is the status quo here in the webinar room. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, so voting is happening. <laughs> At the moment, we have uh, we have uh, all answers as no. Um, uh, while maybe the rest will be uh, voting, Kamil, my, then my, my first question then will, will be from my side. If yeah. uh, there is actually the regulations for large companies starts from the next year, so really not not much time, how quick such a tool can be implement, implemented, integrated, implemented uh, with, for example, in cooperation with you, so how long also it can take and also which resources are needed, especially from, from the bank side? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is a good question. Uh, I, I would say that there is a, let's say, a very strong position uh, from our perspective because we have, uh, let's say, um, a solution that, that is, uh, let's say, easy to implement because that is uh, a web platform. So in case that, uh, for example, our customer want to uh, use it and implement, uh, we, we just, uh, let's say, switch on the, the button mm -hmm. and uh, that is uh, ready to use. Uh, because of fact that is a uh, let's say um, uh, SaaS platform, and we we can uh, um, let's say for example uh, implement the the link for the uh, survey on the mm -hmm. website of our customer, or even uh, if customer want to uh, use the the other form, we are ready to even uh, connect via API 
uh, to, mm -hmm. to use the data uh, from our survey for our score because I as I uh, mentioned and uh, try to um, show it on our uh, slides uh, we, we have uh, let's say whole uh, summary and score for the ESG factors so so also all that data a customer can uh, use and fill in in other processes uh, for example risk management so so it's easy to implement and to be honest uh, in uh, that is uh, let's say no implication and impact uh, from the technical perspective and uh, um, there is no uh, let's say some big uh, project and big investment because we can share it via uh, via web. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have uh, uh, all answers uh, as no. So I don't know whether 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 you see should see it now, but uh, it is actually it's good news that it can be uh, this uh, obligatory step. Let's say it can be implemented. Uh, uh, pretty 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 fast with you. Um, we have uh, a question from John. Uh, thank you very much, John. So um, that it's a very interesting approach. I am told there are currently around 120 organizations globally uh, offering ESG scoring methodologies. When do you think this might become standardized to a common approach that everyone understands and accepts? Oh, it's <laughs> it's a quite a tricky question, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, because uh, of course from the uh, one side we have the specific regulation, so uh, so we we have some obligation to uh, create such uh, reports and create uh, let's say some uh, solution to to cover that area, and uh, um, some companies are. Uh, uh, let's say have obligation to uh, to implement uh, implement it but uh, from the other side of course uh, there is still some time uh, to prepare but maybe it's not a lot of time but uh, but very often we know that uh, some companies uh, want to leave it uh, for the end and uh, to be honest, uh, um, it's hard to say uh, what, uh, when it uh, it uh, it will become uh, standardized, uh, and uh, it's it's very hard to to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we can uh, get back, so next question will be uh, from my side. If we can back can uh, get back to your presentation to these five uh, five tips uh, that you mentioned for um, for SMEs, right? My question, just a second, I will yes, these are this this five. Yeah. Um, my question to you is: um, Do you think this uh, can be somehow uh, automated, fully or partially? Because what I see here, this is um, a lot of job, uh, you know, to, to, to be done. And as we know that uh, SMEs have very uh, restricted or limited resources. And uh, the more automated this could be, the better. Uh, what is your opinion on that? And in general, um, which resources? And I here think more about actually how many people such an SME should should have inside the team to to you know to arrange all of this. Yeah, uh, it's also <laughs> I think mm -hmm. tricky question because it depends uh, on mm -hmm. the uh, organization and the, let's say level of the preparation at the moment. But I think that uh, um, also let's say maybe I will start from the uh, uh, bigger entities and bigger companies. Uh, we uh, we very often see that there is a specific um, position even on the board level. Uh, called like, uh, for example, chief ESG uh, office or uh, chief uh, sustainability uh, office. So, so we know that it's uh, very crucial, and also in the strategies of the uh, banks or other financial institution, it's uh, um, uh, the, the crucial point to, to cover uh, that area. 
and of course uh, there are there are some teams to, to support uh, in the organization uh, for example for example collecting the data uh, to create some procedures uh, um, even on the onboarding process or onboarding the uh, the vendors to get some data about the uh, ESG factors but from the uh, smaller uh, companies uh, for example SMEs I think that it's it will be um, let's say rather uh, hard to uh, create a new position it will be rather the uh, let's say some uh, some unit uh, cooperation between let's say even the the cross uh, teams uh, uh, the community uh, to, mm -hmm. to cover that area and uh, to try to uh, figure out how to collect the data, how to uh, make the procedures uh, to, to, to handle the non-financial reporting. Uh, and uh, maybe even it, uh, it will be, for example, one FTE to, 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 uh, to get the, mm -hmm. um, the topic. Uh, on the top and uh, to make sure that uh, um, that kind of company will will have uh, such such data to share yeah mm -hmm. yeah so this is rather the rather new uh, fte or our just additional task for, yeah. for, for existing ones right <laughs> um do you think uh, where i'm heading actually to do you think banks can help here um especially um, SMEs because if to go maybe um a step further and to take advantage of the open banking uh and think uh, on the point that banks here can be a really good um helper let's say and provide of value information uh, to the customers in the context of uh, carbon fo footprint impact as well because for example if you imagine that having uh, the transactional data right so having uh, the analysis or the analytics on the customer spendings uh, with the implementation of some kind of uh, uh, pfm or bfm uh, connected maybe uh, with or integrated with such kind of calculator can actually help uh, actually both individual and SME customers to really see the impact uh, on the go. Uh, for example, by their spendings, maybe some, of course, additional non-financial criteria should be added and automated somehow. And this uh, could help to, well, first of all, to see it uh, on the ongoing basis. Second, uh, probably to set some targets and to understand due to the uh, to the criteria implemented how they can uh, change, for example, uh, their results on the carbon footprint impact. Do you think this is a um, um, possible thing that can be implemented in the nearest time uh, by the banks? Because I guess that such functions except of except of the regulatory um except of regulations because this covers part of the uh let's say uh, business customers it can engage more and really have you know better impact uh, uh on everybody and on climate change of course yeah yeah uh, I think that, uh, for example, banks will have a uh, very sp specific role in, in that uh, area because mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the one perspective, they will be the, the administrator uh, of the supply chain and mm -hmm. they will be, uh, let's say, the entity that have lots of uh, partners and cooperators mm -hmm. and they have to collect uh, all the data not only uh, internal about itself but also mm -hmm. about the companies uh, that they cooperate with and cooperate with uh, so uh, it, it, there is uh, let's say the the big challenge to to get the data to get proper data and create for example some KP Kamil, I think we have lost you.
Yes, we lost Kamel uh, for a moment. If he is back, uh, we continue uh, for a moment or two uh, the webinar. If you do have questions, you can type them and we will answer them uh, uh, either right now or, you know, um, after the webinar, uh, if Kamel uh, will fail to, to connect again. So let's wait for, for a moment or two. Well, I see that, yes, Kamal is suffering some technical uh, problems. So um, sorry for that. Um, thank you very much. So we, we will be wrapping up uh, in that case. Uh, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we will send uh, the video and uh, and the presentation right now uh, after we finish, and um, and um, also maybe the answer uh, for the for the last question. Uh, thank you very much. So see you next time during our next webinars uh, in uh, December already. Because in November we will be all engaged uh, at our CE22 SME Banking Conference, which takes place in Prague physically on November 25th. And also we will stream uh, the event live. So you're welcome to, to join either physically, please come to Prague and we will meet in person or join us online and, uh, and, and be with us online, discuss all our topics. I will be personally very glad to have you all there. So thank you very much uh, for your engagement and for the participation. And see you next time. Have a nice afternoon.